Don't you think that singles form like a huge demographics mm. because cost of living is higher, property prices are higher, singles can only buy like brand new BTO, two rooms and yep. below yep. if they are 35. If they are 35, they can buy any kind of resale. Do you think it would be good to implement like a lower age bandwidth? I personally think that it will be very unhealthy actually if we were mm. to reduce the age 35. People are too comfortable with themselves. They don't want to get married. They have their own place. They start to sell and buy, sell and buy, sell and buy. It has to protect the mass majority of the citizens and the people staying in Singapore. There will be maybe lesser marriage. Marriage might be at a later age. So that, that might affect birth rate population. Mm. But a lot of my single friends the whole are happy staying with parents. No, 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 no. So that the mom they, can continue to wash they, their clothes. They, <laughs> <laughs> you know, go home, got clothes, got supper, got food, everything. No, but it's not that. It's like, they, you must, you must hear the no, reason why, laughing, it's why true, they want So, uh, Lyndon, share with us how was your experience on the first uh, uh, episode? Hmm. Do you like it? I enjoyed it. Uh, I think it's a, a place where you can really challenge and not just agree on oh, oh, to whatever <laughs> you wrong says. What, what do you enjoy about, about the episode? I think it's a place that really you can just voice out whatever you feel and ultimately you hear from the other side how they tend towards it and then you start to get a sense of the general market la, okay. and people's different opinions because you only if not you have tunnel vision ma, mm. and you only just see it from one angle but hey, sometimes then, you sorry see, can you send me the August articles link <laughs> <laughs> sometimes okay, when sorry, you see ahead. from a second point like like my experience is only what two years plus Melvin's experience is 16 Yu Rong is 10 mm. so I would have never thought that like last time three betas uh, it's like 800 and your thing is crazy already. But now three betas are like 2 million and I think it's crazy. And me thinking that if three betas ever go to 2.5, 3 million, it's even more crazy. Right. So we talk about, uh, what do we talk about? Last last episode, we just talked about the everything BTO, about BTO. BTO resale yes. route renovations. <clears throat> okay. Why don't we talk a little bit about the uh, National Day Rally that's coming up? Of course, now today is uh, 18 August. By the time this is at, yeah, I think National Rally will come out already. 20th of August, right? <laughs> 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 we're doing a webinar on National Day Rally. Hey, we're also doing a live episode on 15th September. By yeah. the way, uh, do stay tuned with us because we're going to do like a live debate on 15th September that uh, we're going to have four different speakers. Yes, of course. Do you know that you'll be on? I, I found out about this episode like two days ago. <laughs> Come on, I already <laughs> sent you the schedule how long. No, not for him. this episode. Linda, you need to read your chat group. Oh, I this swear, this episode, no. Or oh, maybe as it like now. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> oh, okay, okay. But you know about the debate. Lah. Yeah, I know about the debate. What, and, what, are, you, what are you debating about? He has been preparing. What's your, what's your position? <laughs> My position, I am... BTO. You're right? for what? I'm representing BTO. Represent, okay. Uh, then you're representing Kondo. what? Okay, then uh, Joanne, Joanne for EC and uh, Grace, Grace for, for resale. Resale HDB, yes. huh? Okay. Uh, and you'll be the moderator? Yes, I'll be the moderator. Okay. Oh, you represent landed property. He <laughs> always represent landed one. <laughs> okay, uh, have you all watched that uh, video by uh, PM Lee on uh, just some excerpts on what they might be speaking about on National Day Rally? No. <laughs> I, I, I've seen snippets of it on TikTok. Okay. But, mm, okay. What, what nothing that they, really what? gonna like like my TikTok is now flooded with the the P <laughs> the presidential election. Okay, do y'all think do y'all think uh something's gonna happen to uh singles <laughs> buying resale HDB? Do you think they'll drop the age from 35 to like I don't know what age? 30? But I think quite oh. unlikely. Why? The Russian, age is Russian. there because of uh basically it's supposed to be pro family, right? That's why you know like singles 35. Right. Yeah. If not, we will have even lower birth rate. Okay. But do you think that needs are changing? I mean, on a, like a generational basis, every generation mm. is different. Mm. I mean, like a uh, low birth rate is prevalent in all global cities. Mm. Uh, and it's, and it's regardless whether you're married life. or not. So it's like, I'm married, I don't have kids. You, Rome's married, do you have kids? No, I, I cannot diverge too much information. Uh, okay. yeah. but, but anyway, I think like the key thing of this National Day Rally, I think what 
will be more important is what are the things that we're going to put in place to continue to make sure that you know like housing is going to be affordable to Singaporeans. I think that would be the key thing. La. I think like singers, of course, you know, like uh, important, but they are like one subset you know, of the general entire uh, climate of having affordable housing for Singaporeans in years to come. Mm, I mean, but don't you think that singles form like a huge uh, kind of demographic population, yeah. demographics mm. because like um, cost of living is higher, property prices are higher, singles can only buy like brand new BTO, two rooms and yep. below yep. if they are 35. If they are 35, they can buy any kind of resale, right? Mm. Um, what do you think, Lyndon? What are your thoughts? Do you think it would be good to implement like a lower age bandwidth? I feel that <clears throat> it will be... The 35 is really there for a reason. Mm. Because that gap of just from 30 when like you have started working for maybe about four or five years already. Mm. Uh, then you want to look for a house. But you no choice you have to wait another five more years. And then you mature a bit and all that kind of thing. Build your, your savings and all that. But if they straight away lower it to 30, right, you're going to start to see a lot of diversions in the in the nucleus mm. and the home profile of people. I, I, I personally think that it will be very unhealthy, actually, if we were mm. to reduce the age 35. Give mm. an example, right? So, for example, if uh, we are trending towards, you know, like in a climate where a relationship, we don't have to get married for people who maybe, they want to be in a relationship, but they don't want to have kids. And given how property prices are going up, and if let's say we were to reduce the age band, right? Okay, let's say me and Linden, we are dating. And then assuming that then he buys one house at 30, I buy one house at 30, we each have our own HDB. We don't have to get married. Get married already. If assuming we don't have kids, right? And this is like the ultimate goal of owning two properties in a family nucleus. Owning without, two very affordable properties. Yeah, very affordable properties. High rental you. Five years later. I shift in with you, then I'll leave shift in with me and then we can rent it out. And this will be like 8%, 9% rental you. In 20 years, this will be fully paid. No, but uh, uh, aren't, years. aren't like uh, people doing that? I mean, even though at age 35, maybe a couple, uh, they feel that, you know, marriage is just a certificate. They don't want to get married and then they just buy one HDB each. Yeah, yeah so that's a little why bit different because most of the time, like for, for, for those people that I hear of like such scenarios, right? They are most of the time, like one of them is above 35, one is below 35. Mm. And uh, the one that's above 35, they bought a HDB. And uh, the other one that is uh, below 35, they go and buy a condo, then they get married. Mm. And so in this scenario setup, they don't have to let go of either of the HDBs. But for example, let's say both are above 35, they each own a HDB. If they were to get married, one of them has to let go of the HDB. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I mean, like, I'm, I'm just thinking from the perspective that if people want to do that, yes. they can remain single even at 35, 35. They are, example, they are already dating, but they just intend that they don't want to get married, right? 35, I go and buy one HDB, but 35, I go and buy one HDB. Then we own it for five years, move in, then rent out. But what, what is the difference with dropping that itch? Okay, because there's, there's like a real need on the ground. Uh. There's, there's probably like a lot of singles that don't want to live with parents because maybe there's conflict mm. within their family mm. nucleus. Mm. Um, you know, as, as people grow up, they become adults. Mm. Living needs are different. Then you're like 28, 30, 31, 32, you're, you're stuck with a parent. And you really want... <laughs> I, and rental is so expensive. Okay, so I... I yeah, let, what, what do you think? Let, let me share a bit on this. Yes. I think it's a very, very big paradox. Mm. Uh, we need to go back to the fundamental thinking of why they want to buy a property. Mm. Is it to earn money or is it to have their own space? Have their own space? Because no one's stopping you from renting, ma. correct? You can rent a one bedder, you can rent a, a room rental. Very expensive, two room, like one no, bedder. Or don't say one bedder, say a two room HDB. Uh, very hard to find also. Three room HDB? Three room HDB. Three room HDB. How much you is three room HDB? I would say maybe about two five to three. Two people split thousand five, which is more or less As you are the co-living. Uh. No, 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 no. Like let's say you and your partner. Oh, okay. Uh, so it's about 1,005. Of course, it's cash. But at the same time, you are building your CPF. So you can mm. have the option of doing that to test, to see how is it like your own space and all that. No one is stopping you at all. The only reason why the 35 is there is to protect the mass majority of the market. Uh, because just imagine if like we got 100 plus people in PLB. Mm. Imagine, I would say like if we dropped it to 30, right? Yeah. <laughs> home ownership rates are people are too comfortable with themselves. They don't want to get married. They have their own place. They start to sell and buy, sell and buy, sell and buy. Mm. It has to protect 
the mass majority of the citizens and the people staying in Singapore? Protect as they want. Like, uh, no, no. Okay, so so protect and the direction that the government want is very different. It's two different things. Mm. I mean, what, what, what are we trying to protect? Or like, is it because... Uh, if we lower the, the... The direction is for more birth rates. If we lower to 30, number one, there is few things. Like, number one, maybe marriage. There will be maybe lesser marriage. Marriage might be at a later age. You know, that, that might affect birth rate population. Mm. Longer term wise, it will impact our own like productivity, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, the other more immediate impact is if there are more transactions that's going to happen because singles can buy in, then there is, uh, you are going to increase the number of demand. Mm. Right? And when the demand increases, then it will spill over to pricing. Let's say, you know, like true flat prices go up, then it will eventually spill to four room flat, five room flat, et cetera. You know? So this is like a ripple effect. Okay, so the last time I have you seen the article about <laughs> the fact that in a certain cut off year, there's going to be a lot of the old uh, baby boomers, mm. HDB, yep, yep, right? Yep. Okay. Mm. So do you all think that actually by lowering the rates, it actually can create an additional demand to absorb all this like older three-room flats or mm. four-room flats I, that has a balance of 50 over years? So I think we are in a very similar situation towards like Japan. Okay, okay. Wait, uh. Japan. you mentioned one very good point. Japan, right? Can you help me Google as a birth rate now? It's a uh, negative the birth rate one. is negative. Okay. Just let me Google Japan birth rate versus Singapore birth rate. No, so so I want to ask, mm. you see, if the birth rate is about the same, mm. a lot of global cities in the world, they don't have public housing. Mm. If our public housing is towards the context and objective that I want to encourage marriage, but if it's not even working to increase the birth rate, and our birth rate is the same as Japan. Just have a look at the latest article. So our birth rate is about the same as Japan. So, so, so then we should that. raise it to 40. La. <laughs> no, so, so, so what is the rationale of keeping the singles age at 35? Because you are not, mm. the birth rate is not growing, right? So, so I mean like my, my, thing, my thought process is that if our birth rate is really suffering, other countries don't even have public housing. Our public housing, of course, is good for couples. But that is not even encouraging birth rate in the sense that people can get married, but they are not giving birth. So how does that impact the fact that you are limiting singles from owning their own home? Okay, I think like if they really just take away entirely like, okay, it's 30 years old for singles to buy, correct? Mm. So you're not even trying to cultivate something. You're not even trying to cultivate a family. You're not even trying to like... So uh, it's like a better chance to yeah, have kids. It, uh. It's a mentality right. behind it. Like... Like you, how to say, you you know when you have kids, you have sleep schedule and all that, you cultivate it. So the I think the government on the whole, right? At least get you to get married first. Try right. Yes, at least get you to get married. You don't have kids, it's okay. Mm. Never mind, at least you There's are married. There's a chance. You know, maybe after about like one, two years of Eren uh, Sujie, three years, five years, then you start to like, hey, something might happen. Uh, Something's different. Like maybe that's a very good point. Actually, next that's a milestone. Very good point. Yeah. Yeah. But if you don't cultivate it like, eh, okay, la, you want to be non-exclusive and all that kind of thing, you all can each go about your own stuff, then there's no possibility of that even happening. Okay, that's a very it's good Actually, point. basically, if yeah. you are, we were to go like, and reduce this, actually, you will see that the birth rate will be- Even worse, drastically will plummet, worse off. Will yeah. <laughs> okay. So that doesn't- I mean, I mean, Sometimes I just feel that singles are very poor thing. La. I mean, like for those who mm. probably they cannot find a partner yet, mm. Uh, to have a BTO or resale. Also not true because in the sense that sometimes uh, I have a lot of friends that also choose to remain single. Mm. Yeah, and, and this is like more like a choice rather than like, you know, like sometimes, you know, like if uh, you, if there is not a right person, there yeah. is no point to just settle. Yes, of yeah. course, of course. I mean, I just felt that there were the, my feeling and thought process is that there's like a group of people that are stuck. Maybe from 30 to 35. Yeah, some of them definitely yeah, because you stuck. know, like you, you want to own something. Yeah. But then because the- Oh, you want to move out to somewhere, the, but the, the rental is like too high. Yeah. yeah. I, I I feel that- This is like a social talk show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of my single friends, the whole are happy core, stay with parents. No, 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 no. So that the mom they, can continue they, to wash they, their clothes. They, <laughs> <laughs> you know, go home, got clothes, got supper, got food, everything. No, but it's not that. It's like, they, you must, you must hear the no, reason why, is why true, they uh. want to have a place. Okay. I laugh uh, at your reaction. <laughs> ultimately, a lot of people, right, uh, they want to have a property in Singapore is because they want to earn the money from it. Uh, uh, they want a place to call their home and all that kind of thing. Right, right. But the key fundamental reason is not really finding a place to call your own because if they really wanted, like, like if it's for me or like some of my single friends, they really wanted, they would have rented out already. 
they would have went out to rent in the open mm. market and it could support because your CPF is still building my ultimately until you're 35. Of course, well, you well, are they don't have Sienna. the income to rent. Okay, so they, they have the income to rent they because have. nowadays, if you if you look at the new trend, uh, if you go and see a lot of uh, the younger gen companies, right? Uh, when they are in their late, let's like, say 25, 26, uh, so a do lot you, of them- Do you all watch the, the YouTube by Asian Boss? No. <laughs> no, I, it, no, it's, it's the average income in Singapore. A lot of people in their 30s, the, I mean, we, we have to look at the average income. It's okay. very hard to rent a property. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sorry, you're saying? <laughs> so a lot of uh, these uh, younger gen, like 20 plus, right? Mm. 25, 26, right? Uh, uh, they started renting on their own already. So either they rent with three to four colleagues, they rent an like, entire house, they share the space, mm. or they will go out there and they will do a room rental themselves. So actually, in fact, I've seen quite a number of them decide to rent like an own studio or like a one bedder. Right. Mm. Mm. Or co-living. And, 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 and these, are, these are actually your, your Singaporeans. Okay. Yeah, that's why we also see rental transactions actually went up dramatically the last one and two years, especially mm. during the COVID situation. It accelerated this entire renting earlier because you need your own space. You're working from home. You need more space. There is more friction. You know, everybody needs to right. study, etc. Right. Mm. I think okay. it's when you have no choice, but a lot of us Singaporeans who are singles, we have a choice. It's either we every month sacrifice $1,000 to our renter or we just stay with our parents and then we can use this thousand dollars to maybe go eat more Hai Di Lao, uh, subscribe more stuff, you know, and all that kind of thing. So, but we need to see in absolute terms, if I'm spending thousand dollars in cash, I cannot use my CPF. My CPF is building. Ultimately, when I hit 35, I will still be able to use my CPF to purchase my house. Mm. So we need to see it in tandem. Because mm. a lot of people in my generation, we usually don't look at CPF. Right. And, and, and I also think that because like 35 is a good sweet spot like in the sense that because if you want to come to get a HDB, then uh, you need to fulfill like certain criteria. If you want to have your own space, or own your own space, then the private property is still open. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think if, if we are even saying that it's so expensive to, to buy a HDB already, the private property is even more. Okay, have a look yeah. at this news. Uh, by the way, we are doing this episode. Hey, which one is the big camera? Sorry. Okay. <laughs> by the way, we're doing this episode right in our HQ office uh, at level 11 because uh, downstairs we're having like a full day of shoot for our uh, realty team. Have you done a shoot already? Yeah, I did my shoot yesterday. Oh, how was it? Uh? It was very, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Okay, anyway, kudos to our uh, production team, uh, Daniel, Cephas, Joel, give them a round of applause. Come, uh, last minute setup. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you think this will happen? No. I Why? feel like when this guy writes the news, uh, something's going to happen. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Talk a little bit about this, uh, Linda. What do you think? Do you think this will happen? Actually, we brought a very good point. Since prime location has PLH, mm. why shouldn't there be an EC in prime location? What are your thoughts, Lyndon? I feel that it will be very detrimental to the private property market. Why? Uh, it depends on the difference in the price when they launch. And because honestly, when you look at ECs and private properties in like the OCR, mm. Pongo, Ishun, and all that kind of thing, they are not much difference. Mm. So it really depends on what the plan is for the government. Like if you tell me like, like for now, I'm a firm believer of ECs in Pongo. Why? Because ultimately in the 2030s, the digital district is going to come. You're going to have a lot of expats. Foreigners will be able to buy into the private property ECs that after 10 years become. But like places like Yishun, Tengah and all that have not yet developed. So once they put this in, uh, foreigners are just going to flood in. If I can get a uh, EC in, say, Red Hill, Queenstown. Mm, foreigners as in what? Because after the 10 years mark. Ma. Oh, okay. You're talking yeah. about the resale. La. Yeah, okay, the resale. Okay. La. So if I can get an EC in, say, Queenstown for 1.4 million, 1.5 million. Cannot be, la, bro. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. No, look at this article. They're talking about the first owner. Okay, like if you build a brand new EC, it's going to create an in-road for first-hand owners to own it. Correct, from correct. scratch. Yeah. Correct. Uh, okay, I, I don't think when 10 years later, the price is going to be 1.4 because 10 years no, later- No, no, no. They, no, I say they enter at 1.4. Okay. The, the first owners, they enter at 1.4. Something very affordable. Maybe after five years, 10 years, once it privatized, right? 
they Because can, we're 2 million already. Yeah, but in 10 years now, right, how much do you think Sterling Residences is going to sell for? Three. Precisely. For a three beta. But like. then foreigners can buy this new EC at, let's say, No, Kingstown. the foreigners is controlled by ABSD. Yeah. yeah, but in 10 years, let's say, because this ABSD, do we really think that it will be No, and 10 years helpful. later, the price will match up to the existing market condo price already. No, but okay, what, what do you think? <laughs> What, what do you think th- uh, okay. about this? Do you think this will happen? Okay, so basically like uh, EC was first introduced to, you know, like use some form of aspiration to what we call the sandwich class. Uh. The previous version of executive condo is HUDC, mm. right? So some form of bridge between a public housing and a private housing. Of course, HUDC was scraped and then it was replaced with executive condos that actually have uh, facilities, uh, etc. So one of, uh, in terms of EC performance, one of the, projects that performed the best was Bishan Loft and that was the closest as a condo to the city centre. And mm. since then, there was nothing that was as close to the city centre. So the next one will probably be Novo in Yochukang area. And it's been very, very clear that we want to make sure that these are in the outside central region uh, because we cannot give the best of everything, right? So that's one thing. Achura in the Tengah area recently launched last week, 1,004 plus per square feet. In a similar district in the OCR new launch for like a, it's 2000 PSL. Let's say for example, we use the Miss. And you can see this price gap between a new EC and a new condo is about 30 odd over percent of price gap. So if let's say for example, today, RCR new launches is about 25 PSF. Mm. And today, if I want to give a 30 odd percent kind of gap, this EC will need to launch at $1,800 per square feet. Yeah. $1,800 per square feet, I assume that this I do a more compact version of a three beta, 900 square feet, it will be 1.7 million. Mm. And now to qualify for 1.7 million based on the mortgage servicing ratio for escalated condo, what it means is that the income needs to be $22,000 in order to have enough loan ability to get 75% loan for a $1.7 million property. Mm. And this will be far exceeding the 16,000 income gap. So, and also it will not be healthy because there will be a lottery effect for people who are be able to have a chance to get this at like imagine you're getting like 1007 PSF brand, uh, yep. 1008 PSF brand new. RCR, In the prime area. You'll be so hot <laughs> when you can sell unless you know like they're going to impose certain forms of like something like a PLH kind of scheme where you have a much longer MOP period. You need to claw back certain uh, percentage of in terms of uh, income appreciation mm. such that you are really giving the opportunity for people who want to stay and not trying to speculate, you know, like right. five, eight years, I just want to make like a huge pot of gold over here. In fact, I think what you say would be very true because let's say in the RCR region is 2005 PSF, a thousand square feet, three beta, 2.5 million. Mm-hmm. Man. Then when all these brand new projects COP, people are going to exit at 2.8, 2.9 million. So somebody that got into an EC, let's say at 1.7, 1.8 million, they are going to earn a million dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Easily. Easily like four years construction, five years, MOP. nine years, they're going to earn a million dollars. Yeah. If they, if they come in here. Yeah. So, so it will just only benefit a small group of people, right? So yeah. from a policy making standpoint, housings or like housing schemes should benefit the majority. Mm. Not just yeah. a select few. La. Right, okay. Well, uh, anything to, to top up, Lyndon? I think the key thing is that we have to focus that if it really does happen, a lot of uh, checks will be in play, like for PLH. Maybe they will have similar 10 years MOP. Mm, they have good to point. give back like easily 10, 15% of their profit towards the government and all that kind of mm. thing. So it will force them to really, okay, this is my final home. I'm buying it to stay here all the way already. So that means you have an easy slash... Final PLH home. slash then maybe the MOP will be 10 years then privatization will be 15 years yeah nice good point possible I think, I think it might be possible that's how I mentioned it okay <laughs> it's like because we <laughs> ask a lot of our friends to buy PLH right so you're saying they say I won't sell <laughs> okay mm. they say I won't sell right yeah. right okay do y'all think that okay, firstly there's two things number one is that the sales of the new launches this year because there are 47 new launches we still have so far I think we launched about 23 if I'm not wrong, so we have probably about 10 plus to go or 20, but I think a lot of boutique developments as well. Secondly is that the beats are getting lesser uh, mm, for some of, of the, some of the land plots, right? Mm. Uh, what do you think about this article? Clementy Pine Grove sites, by the way, there's going to be one plot that will be launched at Nanhua. That's is- going to be hot. Is this place the- It's beside the Claiborne and Clement canopy. Yep. Oh, wow. It's like a it- sandwich. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's uh, one of the last plots over there. Uh, Clermont, 
And Clement cannot be both by the same developer. Yeah. What's the this, name of the developer? UOL. Oh, okay. So I think they are going to get it as well. This is this is a sure sure win. Sh- sure win. In a, okay, sure yeah. win in the sense that there will definitely be someone that beats this land. Wow. And okay, because okay. the performance of uh, so far, you know, in terms of that kind of uh, land size, uh, you can see that actually most of the time they sell out pretty fast. Yeah. Uh, those that take slightly longer will be like Park Clementis where uh, it's like 1,300 1, over units where the land size is bigger. Yeah. Uh, I think the Pine Grove Site B uh, by not, might not have so much interest. Why? Because Pine Grove Site A, the launch hasn't, uh, is, I would say like it is okay. In a sense, they, are, they sold 29% on their first weekend of launch. Mm-hmm. Uh, about 150 units out of that 520 units that uh, for the Site A. Right. Mm. So, um, what do you all think is the main contributing factor for this? I mean, in terms of new launch performance. Maybe uh, you won't share your thoughts. I, I think it's just basically boils down to demand and supply. And uh, that definitely is one. And of course, the overall uh, property climate that we are in. Mm. So if you were to see uh, in 2021, 2022, launches did extremely well. 70 plus over percent is like, like the floor rate. And 97% is one of the highest performance in terms of uh, first weekend sales. And that is because in 2020 and 2021, there was extremely low number of garment land sales that was being launched. Mm. And hence, if today you want to buy something, you have very limited choice, right? And so when we bump up the number of garment land sales uh, in 2022, then of course in, with of course M blocks as well. So 2023 basically is a season where there is a lot of choices for buyers, but your demand is not going to dramatically increase. Mm. And so buyer pool spread across choices and of course the performance of each uh, project they will have lesser sales. But you can see actually, if we look at uh, all the sales launches that have been done this year, those uh, very popular launches, for example, like Grand Diamond, uh, Tembusu Grand, they still achieve more than 50% closing rate. Like Lentor Hill did extremely well as well. So Pine Tree Hill is at 29%, 150 mm. out of 520. Yes. Uh, Altura, 61%. Actually, this one quite um, interesting. Uh, what is it that they only achieve 61%? 61% or, is actually pretty good. This is an EC. Uh, and uh, they I mean, like for EC, we were like expecting it to be higher, right? Someone is like in the very uh, up and coming town. Because they have uh, hit the record highest pricing for EC new launch, right? 1,000, <laughs> per square feet. Okay. <laughs> right. How yeah, about uh, Linden? What are your thoughts about new launches? Great job for the developer. Do you think it's slowing down? Uh, that definitely slowing down. I. Why? What do you think is a, what, what, what do you think are the contributing factors? I feel my my contributing factors are. Yeah, by the way, your next home will you buy new launch or resale? My next home, ah, uh, because my HDB new launch condo under, or resale condo. It really depends. So will you sell your HDB after it MOP in five years time? Uh, if I buy a launch, I won't sell lah because I'll just buy it under my name. If I buy a resale, then I will sell. Sorry. Oh, oh, the, the, the home is under your yeah, wife's my, name. The home is under my wife's occupier. Name. So I'm just. Oh, occupier. okay, okay. Yeah. So that means you won't sell already. It depends on what I buy. That means you will keep this golden goose. No, 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 no. If it's a, if I buy a resale, I will sell it. If I buy a launch, I won't sell it. Temporarily, you won't sell it. Is yeah, it? temporarily. Like, because you want a, you need a place to stay. You yes, want to correct, do like a correct. rental and all so that. So if you buy like, a you resale are. condo using uh-huh. your own name five years later, you will sell the HDB. Yes, most likely. To move in. To move in. Then if you buy a new launch, I wouldn't what's, sell. What's the rationale, what's the rationale of uh, what, selling? What, you can buy resale and won't sell also. What? It's yeah. because I want to kill the golden goose and then I want to use my wife's name to buy another resale. Okay, so if you yeah. buy a new launch corner under your name, you will wait until it completes construction, but you will still sell it in Correct. the Correct. Uh, so, so you should stay tuned for the 15th September where <laughs> I will give you the my, your my ultimate strategy. Your ultimate plan, my huh? ultimate strategy. Like what is the quantum I'm looking at? Because like, you know, my wife is a medium average worker. Mm. So what can we really afford that we can stay comfortably? Mm. Yes. Nice. So, looking forward. Looking forward. No, so just give us a summary of your plan. Will you sell? He's trying yeah, to build, I do. He's I, trying I, to I, build I, up so, to so, that. So I you, if I buy a resale. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Uh, so, so what is your rationale for selling that BTO? Okay. Because I need to kill the golden goose and take out whatever the, the golden la. goose has fattened up over so you, the past five years. So you don't believe in keeping it? La, nah. For rental? Most likely not. You're not in the you're not a dividend play person. Mm, he's nah. too young for dividend yeah, play. Yeah, I'm la. too young. I'm too right. young for dividend yeah, play. He's only 23. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so so do your spouse have any uh objections to selling away the HDB? Uh, at this point in time. At this point in time. If she's listening. 
at this point in time, if I wanna, if I wanted to give up before, of course she had a lot. Of okay, spend spend like twenty seconds convince her. So okay, so uh, Let's look babe, into the camera. You must understand <laughs> if you want to go overseas and you want to eat high tea lao, you have to let me decide on how we're gonna use property to earn money. Yes, coming back to us. <laughs> so okay. going back to the thought of uh, why, so you wrong take is that because the buyers are having a lot more options now and the demand is getting lesser that's why the prices uh, the, the launches are dropping in terms of take up rate correct mm. uh, yeah. there's also the what some interest rate expects as well mm. la. okay okay any more disclaimer no 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 <laughs> haven't yeah, your yeah, thoughts about new launch so, yeah. so, 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 so for my so for my thoughts <laughs> is not really towards uh, that. Uh, that that does definitely contribute right. uh, because of all the pent up demand and anger from COVID and all that kind of thing. Mm. But I feel that the main part of why the take-up rate is so, so low now is because we have entered into a new high. Mm. Like when we saw the inventory, right? We are in a new inventory. So this new inventory mm. calls for a newer price tag. For a newer price tag, the take-up rate will be slower until we start to acclimatize to it. Mm. So mm. that is one portion. At the same time, I feel that, like what I said in the previous one, we are really, it's just people are looking at it. I cannot afford it, yeah. Mm. So they are being stretched too thin already. Actually, resale is uh is very hot on the ground right now. Correct. Yeah. Especially for entry level mm. three, four bidders. Yep. Extremely hot. Okay, good point. Uh, how about this? Actually, this is very confusing news. I mean, if you have read it in detail, especially this portion where they talk about the number of millionaires in Singapore, 332,000 millionaires in Singapore, India, which is a country that is extremely huge of course uh, 849,000 mm, we are the only country that sort of like defy the odds compared to like the change in household wealth uh, globally but we all went up I mean over the last year okay but of course when you look at this the com conflicting point is that there's also like other reports that talks about the actual number of millionaires from other reports like 526,000 then there's this HSBC report also talking about like uh, a different amount. Okay, but anyway, what do you think overall about this in terms of like household wealth? Why, why do you think there's like a contributing factor, especially on this portion here? Uh, generally, of course, so we have been seeing household wealth because we did a tabulation, right? So uh, back in 2000 quarter one, mm. the entire Singapore household net worth $567 billion. In 2023 Q1, it was about $2.6 trillion. So which number is that slide? Let me just flash it. 55. All right. Invest fair. Okay. Slides. So if I were to just look at all these numbers, uh, maybe, you know, you can see that across all the different kind of asset instruments, right? Whether is it from cash currency deposits is increasing, shares equities is increasing. Uh, I think something that is almost currency and deposits is increased about like five times. And you can see that in terms of a CPF amount, that is also quite significant. It's like six times increase. Uh, residential property, you can see that actually it is about four times increase from $378 billion to $1.3 billion, especially over the last three years. From 2020 Q1 to 2023 Q1, you can see that there's significant we have this 25% run up in terms of uh, condo prices, 35% run in terms of landed prices. Mm. So I think that attributes to the significant wealth increase as well. Right. Uh, stock market is doing well in 2020, 2021, mm. as well as 2023. Yep. Yeah, so all in all, all this adds on. Okay. Uh, Lyndon, what do you think? I think when you look at the numbers, numbers are very emotionless. Emotionless. Uh, <laughs> Of course, <laughs> what, it, what do you mean? Like, because majority of the time, uh, whenever I read this kind of thing, I start to wonder like, then where are all these people? Like, have I come in contact with them? Have I talked to them? And all that kind of thing. Mm. Majority of the, the people that I meet face to face and all that kind of thing. Hopefully mm. after this, I will meet these uh, millionaires that- uh, I think we should have, go deep dive into the report because what yeah, you just so I was pointed looking at the out- numbers, The numbers really- does no, what's sense. the what's the classification of a millionaire? Is it like a liquid wealth or is it like net worth including real estate and stuff like that? I'll no, but options. if we pull out just now what you shared, the 590 something billion, it really does make sense in terms of that the wealth has increased in Singapore. Especially when we look towards CPF, which CPF is a number that cannot be forged or lied. Uh, mm. with like even though if you try to put more money into CPF, extra more than 30 something. All these numbers are all from you. are all from seeing stat. Yeah. So they publish all these numbers. So so that's what I, I was saying. It 
if you look at the numbers, it really does make sense that there are much more and more that's growing wealth in Singapore. By the way, I'm getting Lester to, from our editorial team to do an in-depth research on this particular article. Mm. We want to find like the definition, the source and like exactly how many... It's even from Singstat, so... No, exactly how many millions. Okay, because if you example, because there's like a conflict here, right? This article mm. says that there's 332,000. This article says that there's 526,000. Oh, uh, but what, I think in general, like... What is this in correlation to the growth in price of the types of, the three types of residential property, landed, condos, and HDB? Like what, what do you think are the correlation? Because let, every time we talk about like the mm. number of properties we have, 73,000 landed, 360,000, 350 to 360,000 units of condo, 1.2 million yep. HDB. HDB. Then now there's like 526,000 millionaires. Mm. Okay, so if it depends on number one, we break down the definition. Or yeah. If you go to the US definition, it will be all asset type less primary residence. So the, the property I'm staying is not classified under my net worth. Mm. The rest, if I additional property, it classifies cash, equities, bonds, etc. Let's assume that maybe this article, we do not have a classic, uh, we include the primary residence inside. Mm. And the I think, value of the property. Yeah, the value of the property inside. Of course, uh, less of whatever liabilities that you have on that on, on that property. And I think it's going to be more and more common because you have already more and more HDBs that cross a million dollars. Mm. right? And that also means that whether is it like somebody is owning a HDB or is it a condo or is it a landed property, there is a lot of equity that contributes to their household net worth. Right, right. So I think it really depends on the definition, right? Does it include a real estate? Because if you look at the 360,000 condos units, most mm. of them are above a million. Mm. Let's say there's already 300 over thousand units, then plus the 73,000 landed, there's about 400,000 plus, plus all the HDB. So I think if they include real estate, then naturally we'll have this amount. Mm. Um, yeah, let's, di let's dive in a little bit and then we, we see how do they define? Yeah. So I was looking at it. Uh, mm. I went to Google. What is Singapore definition of millionaire? Okay. Uh, in an article posted by Mothership just recently on, not recently, uh, 31st of May. Right. So there's this part. In a report, a high net worth individual is someone with a net worth of 1 million or more US, including, including their primary residences. Right. So if you look at it- In then, US dollars. Like yeah, in US dollars. La, which is a 1.35. 1. Mm. Yeah. So this is based on Night Frank. Night Frank is also one of the big property uh, consultants. consultants in Singapore. Right. So I think if we're looking at it, we really have to deep dive into understanding what are millionaires like. Is it really like liquid, you know, can spend and all that kind of thing? And like, you know, they have a lot of liquidity on it or it's just assets. Because if someone owns a Pongo HDB that was sold for a million dollars, then add a few of his shares, stocks, bond, CPF inside. Mm. Most likely he's a millionaire. Actually, a, a lot of, uh, I would say like the wealthier Singaporeans, they have quite a huge amount of uh, liquid cash, either in terms of fixed deposit bonds or mm. equities that are easily to liquidate. And this averagely is like, like one mil is like quite, quite a number of people actually. Mm. Uh, have that from a household perspective. I'm not saying everybody. Right. I'm just saying that like, that is, I would say significant enough. Mm, could it be people. because that you, I mean, naturally because of, of your, your work scope, your trade, I mean, naturally you get to meet this kind of yes, people. Yes, definitely. Right. Because most of the time, a lot of uh, the clients that uh, speak to me, they are doing investments, right? So right. Uh, of course, like generally, they are usually in a higher income bracket. Okay. Uh, and also that, you know, like they, then in exchange, they have higher savings rate and hence, you know, they are able to accumulate the mm. funds and they are thinking, okay, how do I deploy it in the most effective manner? Right. Mm. Okay. But of course, these, these people, okay, age group wise, probably they are like mostly 35 and above. Uh, those at 35 and below is either, maybe they are like, uh, they did really well in crypto over the last mm. uh, two years. Mm. Uh, that also like balloon their wealth in that respect. Right. I think I think it would be very interesting if we can do like a deep dive demographic study on like the income bracket, uh median salary, mm. two zero two two. Okay. Yeah. Actually we are doing that with the research team really. So we have some like basic stuff. We are seeing like uh ninety percent how income, how much is it? Mm. Uh because these are generally I would say like the top fifteen percent income bracket will be uh people who will be 
mainly investing in the private property market. Right. Yeah. So their household income median is, of course, very different from what is reported that usually we see like and on an average scale, it's probably about like 5,000 million income. Right. Mm. Okay. Awesome. Um, there was also a very interesting article. So, so actually this, this episode is like part two because part one, we didn't have time to look through like all the articles we were like mainly debating on BTO versus resale, talking about Linden's uh, new home and also like the wealth gap that, uh, we were talking that, you know, averagely all prior properties will be like $2 million. Uh, it's going to be like a little bit more unattainable market might take a bit more time to absorb. And then we were like debating on whether would there be like a separation of condo, mm. uh, HDB and, and lender. Okay, there's but this I think, article. I think also that one of the good things is like, of course, because uh, quite a number of houses are on a 99 years lease basis. Mm. So there will also be, we will also reach a maturity stage that uh, some of these older condos, right, would have a limit in terms of their appreciation and hence can still be affordable. Mm. And sometimes this might fit like the what older we mentioned, ones. right? Like a uh, quite a number of like retirees that you don't need that runway, you're not planning for legacy planning, and you are trying to use the least amount of resources to enter into asset to fulfill uh I mean my runway on earth like, yeah. and, and enjoy the space that I, I, I need. Yeah, just by a low quantum, older, balance 40 years. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's still okay. What do you think about this parents' attraction effect? This is one of our factors in our mode analysis in analyzing properties. <laughs> Do your thing is like a, I mean like this is nothing new because uh, the rental naturally, prices naturally, demand naturally around schools within a kilometers, especially if there's like popular schools would definitely be in a much better position. But do you think this is like unhealthy or I mean this is just natural stuff? Like what do you think? I would say that 80% of my clients with kids uh, have moved because of schools. Mm. And it is so competitive to the point that okay, if you really understand what are the phases, so I've pulled out the phases uh, just to recap. There's phase one. Phase one means that uh, you have a child or your sibling who's studying in the school. Mm. Okay. Then there's phase 2A, which is alumni, uh, parent member of the school advisory and all that kind of thing. Phase 2B, it is uh, a parent or volunteer, volunteer basis. Lah. Okay, 2C is not registered in the primary school yet. And then there's 2C supplementary. Mm. But out of these five phases, right, there's actually something called tier and priority. Mm. So under this tier and priority, right, you got Singapore citizens within 1KM, Singapore citizens within 1 to 2KM. So it's a lot more. Yep. So one particular client I was serving, I was asking, hey, why you really die die must buy within the 1KM? She said, because even though I'm alumni, I need to be in the tier one, which is within 1km. Mm. Mm. So it's that competitive because already- Too many alumni, uh, tier mm. one. Right? I mean, yeah, too many, too alumni, many right? alumni and too many tier one. Right? Actually, they are, actually, it's mostly this very, very competitive, right? Are really like your, like, really like your top schools. And uh, if, let's say we don't talk about the alumni phase, right? Mm. We talk about the public phase, phase 2C. Uh, <laughs> all these top schools, uh, even if you, are, if you are not Singapore citizen, there is no way you can get in. That's number one. Mm. Second thing, if you're a Singapore citizen and you're out of one kilometer, there's no way they're going to get in. The yeah. chance of getting in is about 50%. Yeah. If you don't have any affiliate alumni, etc., to be within one kilometer of schools. Yeah. Sometimes all these alumni parents, right, they want to ensure certainty because they are concerned that whether maybe my year that my kid is going in, especially the first one, because maybe that year happened to be a higher birth rate. Mm. And if I'm not within one you're kilometer, the dragon. yeah. Which is next then, year. If I'm not within <laughs> one kilometer, right, I might not get in. But most of the time I see is like, usually like I'm a nine phase within two kilometers, you get in. Mm. But they want 100% certainty because you're going to spend so much funds to really relocate and move, right? Especially if you have two or three kids, right? Yeah. You get one in ready, everything is smooth. Yeah. Because you can be in phase one for the next couple of years. It's like, and she's like a true trainer. So, yeah. so my dad client, right? She was uh, telling me, right? That, that school uh, has 400 vacancies. And she says, uh, the alumni plus 1km, right, is already 420 something. Oh my goodness. Mm, mm. Then what's going to happen to 2C? Yeah, but Comfort. the good thing is that the government actually has a... Like oh no, a, there's like, a new system, right? Yeah, there's number of vacancy slots for each phase. So that's mm. why even if alumni, you know, you only have that maximum number of slots to ensure that any unaffiliated parents can still have a chance yep. to send their kids there. What if the... Um, 
420 alumni, I mean, let's say example, the dedicated amount of slots is X number of slots. Then those that didn't get, can they go for the, the other phases as well? Can. So, so they, they will so be spilled over. Yeah. So, so if you don't go into the, 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 the 2B phase, then you can still register for the public. You got two chances. You have two chances. Right. Okay. So uh, I think a lot of people also didn't realize the stickiness effect of the good schools yes. kind of like uh, parents attraction because... I mean, like for people who are always trying to like hunt for fire sale around good schools, mm. I think it's almost impossible. You cannot find. Yeah. The rationale, I mean, in, in we just look at the context of a family nucleus. If a family has two children and they are really going in for that sibling scheme, right? Get the first one in, second one got that chance, right? The very high chance. Six years of primary school. If let's say their age gap is four years, Four like years later, years. another six years. Mm. Four plus six is 10 years. If there's an affiliation school nearby, they are going to be in that yeah. same area and, for- And, and sometimes it's like, a, it's like a true train because they are yeah. going to a secondary school. Yeah. And it's like, it can be a, a, a whole period of like 15 to 20 years that mm. they are in the same enclave and they're not going to sell. They're not going to sell like, there's no fire sale that is happening because mm. they are really buying for their kids, right? When you're looking for the top schools, the, the number of projects and the number of listings, right, is extremely little. Yeah. So most of the time, let's say, you know, like you're going to the private space and you are planning for primary schools, right? It will not be very wise to try to do it like one year before, meaning that I'm going to enroll next year, I start hunting now. Mm, yeah. Your runway and the amount of choices they can have is a bit more limited. Mm. So sometimes it is better to plan three even like three years ahead such that you know like maybe you can find like the right opportunity that comes in because if not uh, your choice are pretty limited yeah mm. then uh, i feel that it will always just stay this way uh so if you that that's why we've included it in our mode analysis mm. uh right. factoring in terms of the proximity towards the near schools la. Mm. i think it's much more apparent in today's climate as compared to let's say 20 30 years ago i feel like in 20 30 years ago uh, there's not so much emphasis on so what what, what on, is that like on, a on shift school. What, what, is, what is this emphasis like building up in the last 10 years mm, well, i feel it's like they want the their, their kids to have a head start like, because in terms of the educational climate right uh primary school is the only thing that you can give your child the advantage not through merit mm. but through privilege because if it's secondary school university and all that it's just based on a performance right? yep. but let's say i'm going to give a head start the only thing I can have a say and position, I have a direct control. To get into a good school. To get into a good school is this. Right. And a lot of times, sometimes it's also for like a networking effect. Mm. So imagine if today, you know, like uh, someone's who and who, right? He, you don't know who is going to be like super famous or super successful, let's say 20, 30 years down the road. Then they want to cultivate that, hey, maybe they might be good friends with uh, the schoolmate. I mean, these are some of the parents thinking, right? Mm. Yeah, so you have like an inner circle that you built up. Because we always treasure, we always treasure friends that we know when we are really young. Because we know that these are the most innocent kind of friends. Right. And you like them, they like you because of like the commonality, the interest, the goals, and like just, you know, like you as a person. But we, I always, I speak to many people, right? And I guess that, you know, like when people grow up, they, they find a little bit more guarded, especially, you know, like when somebody is more successful, they are wealthier. They will be, sometimes they might also think that, hey, is this person reaching out to me because there is something that I can offer to them? Mm. So you, it's very hard for them to differentiate genuine connections. And mm. that's why we always treasure people that we know from our school days. If let's say yeah, they are, you know, like primary school, secondary school. Somehow I feel that, uh, I mean, do, wait, do you all feel primary or secondary school has the most like, uh, stickiness in terms of friendship i mean for you guys i mean is it like primary or second i think can go all the way to army like, i mean still quite innocent i think the most <laughs> sticky one is poly uh but this i i, I want to re-emphasize what you don't say like this is the one of the rare occasions that i really totally agree with him <laughs> very very rare uh, what do you agree with him because i was speaking to one of my uh close poly mates and yeah. like he was on a debate with his wife in terms of like where should they send their school to. Okay. And my friend was saying that I want my, to send my, my, my kid to this school. Then the wife was saying, no, I want you to go to neighborhood school. You went to neighborhood school. I went to neighborhood school. We came out with good ethics, values and all that kind of thing. But my friend told his wife this, if I can have an advantage, a stepping stone for my kid because I didn't have, why should I not give it to him? Mm. So, the fact that, which is very important because it is your connections, it is the environment that you're in. 
at the same time, I think we are in a whole system now that is totally very different. Mm. Okay, like when, when when we went for my my wife's cousin's graduation, we found out that four eh, four or three uh, three of her schoolmates actually were from White Sands Primary. And my wife was very proud because she was from White Sands Primary. So because okay. the cousin is actually studying in Cambridge. Then four of them there, uh, four or three of them there is actually from White Sands Primary. So it really didn't matter. But if you are an East Sider, you will actually know that White Sands now is like the Raffles of the East. Oh, okay. Yeah, so wow. it really does play. But you really don't need to go I thought it's the Primary. White Sands Primary. White Sands Primary is like the, the yes, top school like, now? like top. Wow, la. okay, okay. You don't need to go into like the top, top of the like, the SEP schools. I think they call it independent or SEP schools. Mm. But you just really have to know like where, like this article men mentioned Sengkang Green. Yeah. Yeah, you don't need to go to like ACSI, ACS, Barker, St. Joseph, Nanyang, Nanyang, Nan Chiao, Tao Na. You know, don't need to go into the top top, but it will be good to be in them. But there are also good schools that are neighborhood schools. Mm. Yeah. This is what our Minister of Education Correct. is trying to inculcate. Right? That, yes. that like all schools are good schools. But the I really totally agree with the... The only time that you agree, the, right? The, the network effect. The huh? network effect. Okay. Because if you go on to like President's Scholar, right? Then like that, that time I was just... Because I went to reserve it, I found out about the President's Scholar. So I went to see, uh, no one's from like, like the really never hear before schools mm. and all that. What, what about you? What, what school do you come from? I, I, I came from St. Andrews, but because oh, my good, church, right? my church is there. So mm. it's... It's just because of that. It's not like- Secondary? I did very badly for PSLE also. Yeah, secondary, I also went to St. Andrews. Even though I had offers to like RI, ACS. Then after that? Uh, then I went to Poly. What did you study? Aerospace Electronics. Right. Yeah, so- Then after that? Then after that, I took a, <laughs> I took a nighttime degree from for, four, for three and a half years. What did you study? I studied business. Right. So how, how would you like, uh, I mean, like after thinking about your education route, when you have kids next time, I mean, like now you're, you're doing well, you're happy, you're married. Uh, you look happy. Are you happy? I, I, I'm very happy. I'm very happy. <laughs> okay. So, so next time. He's very happy disagreeing <laughs> with people. No, next time for your kids, what will you want for them? Will you want to fight for like a good school or you're okay to be in a neighborhood school? I think number one, convenience is very important. So it depends on where I'm staying also. Okay. And uh, number two, I need to seek a professional. I cannot be, I cannot be reading online. So I would seek like my sister-in-law, like my wife's sister, cause she's a teacher. So I'll seek a professional and asking like, how is this? Like, is it good? Like it doesn't need to be the best. Oh. Like I don't need to give my kids the best. Okay. I feel that there is a lot, which brings us to the next article later. There's a lot in terms of upbringing. Mm. So it there's doesn't- a, There's really also hard work at play, right? Yeah, yeah. but yeah. I really agree the, the, the environment and the people they surround yeah. themselves with is very important. And, mm. and environment trumps everything. Right? Okay. So, so when you put the correct environment, of course, I'm not saying that. I think for, I, I speak to a lot of different parents that, mm. you know, like, uh, ask me for advice regarding like, you know, the strategy for like primary schools. Uh, sometimes we, if let's say a uh, certain school, there is no good properties. Mm. Sometimes I advise that we are doing the rental arbitrage format to get into the school because it's not 100%, right? You don't want to shift all your resources. Right. We also have scenarios where we shift within one kilometers. Mm. We committed, but we didn't get into the school. Right. Yeah. And of course, then it's very important. Some, some, some respect of like, you know, like in, I think choosing school, one of the things that is hardest to understand is actually what, is, what does the culture provide? Yeah. Uh, aside from, of course, you know, like uh, academic performance, aside from, all these additional like CCA performances. So sometimes if you go to like the open houses, sometimes you go to like hear the principal speak and that's where you understand a little bit better what kind of environment that, you know, like your, your children is going to be in and what kind of uh, values they're going to learn because this is like the budding years. Yeah. E eventually. Totally agree. Yeah. Eventually, yeah. you know, like we all study math, science, and everything, you know, it's not a lot of all these things we are going to use when we graduate. Mm. But what's important in school is to cultivate curiosity, mm. the, 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 the happiness of learning and problem solving, like, you know, like uh, interactions with uh, people, mm. right? So it is not really the subject that is important, but like the values that we can inculcate and the things that we learn through 
our, our work ethic, are we able to have like, you know, cultivate some form of habit such that, you know, like we can uh, submit things on time, etc. Are we able to handle like teamwork, doing project work? I think all these are things that, that will transit mm. in terms of, you know, like an adult kind of environment. Totally agree. Actually, I think uh, also as parents, one very important stage uh, during the primary school years is that because primary school years is like the budding years, mm. children are very easily influenced. Mm. Things that they hear in school, somebody give a talk, the teacher say this, the principal say that, uh, they get shaped very quickly, mm -hmm. uh, even in secondary school. So I think parents' mindset should not be about like, I totally outsource this part to the school. Mm. Uh, but the conversations every week is very important. Like you have to find out like true conversations um, that, you know, how can you also help them to maneuver and, and shape their mindset? Let's say if they, they hit a sticky situation in school, mm. how should they think about it? How should mm. they act? How should they build their courage? So I think the mindset shouldn't be like a total outsource. And sometimes, of course, it also doesn't mean, I mean, like the previous episode we had, right, with uh, Javi and Joanne, they came from very good schools, but I think they, they also share the mindset that they want to spend like more time cultivating the thinking of their, their kids, right? Mm. So how about yeah, you? Imagine like, oh, what's your birthday present? Oh, my birthday present is a MacBook Pro. <laughs> then like, oh, like, oh, oh my, oh, like, you know, like, then they have, they oh, have like, the, where you go for holiday? Yeah, oh, where I you go for Paris. Ho yeah, yeah, then, yeah, so like, it's like, this kind of like, there's a, there's a study on happiness, right? Mm. The happiness study, right, is not on the absolute amount of uh, income that we earn. Right. But of course, we need to meet a minimum threshold such that, you know, like, all the basic needs, housing, food, and all that is taken mm. care of. But most of the time, there's this book uh, that I read called Balance. So they did a research. One of the research basically means that usually if one person is slightly better off than their neighbors in a comparative street, they feel happier. Mm. Rather than being in a in the absolute terms, actually he is much richer, but all the neighbors, right, is way richer than him. Right? He will feel very miserable compared to I'm an average situation, but I'm like slightly better. Mm. Yeah. So it's based on the the relativity, the human like, setup that yeah. humans because naturally like compare. to compare, right? Okay, it feels like we're in a social podcast today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last 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 article. Social nuggets. Okay, this article I haven't read. How about this? What do you think? Actually, I think I don't think we're old enough to talk about this, uh, but uh, I think this is a good article, good read. I have some things to share about this. Okay, talk about this. Okay, I let let me uh, <laughs> let let me have my 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 short entry opening statement first. Sure. So I I had a I had a very funny conversation. So I told my wife, I say, next time when we have kids, right, I want my kids to grow up thinking that I am bankrupt. Okay. So and, I explain and like like want to on aircon uh must ask permission on uh, permission and all that because I think that this like. That's what I went through. Uh, I, I don't want to impose it, but I don't want my kids to know that we are privileged. Mm. Yeah. So I I don't think I will leave for now, lah, for now, as of now. I don't think I'll leave anything behind for my kids. So how will you tell them? Just know lah, if you want to earn it, you earn it yourself. Lah. Like yeah. if they want to buy something, they have to wash my car or cook dinner or wash the dishes. Mm. They, they, they have to do something to know that once they get it, then they're like, wow. Hey, this is hard to get. This is how I want to get it next Okay. Time. Recently, uh, talking about what you just pointed out, recently I read this book. It talks about how you should praise children. There's two ways. One is praising through, they call it effort praising. Mm. They have done research comparing effort praising versus Results. intelligence praising. That means intelligence praising is like, oh, wow. You're very smart. Very like, so clever, wow, yes, like you know, like so clever. <laughs> <laughs> Ayo, you're so smart. Are you no so cute? So hand okay, like intelligence praising. The other one is that okay, you have uh, achieved this today because of your hard work. Keep it up, keep your hard work going. Mm. Always remember hard work brings you results eventually, even if you feel mm. you can't. So so what is effort praising? What is intelligence praising? Actually, they compare like kids over the years. Mm. Kids who have been brought up with effort praising, actually they have a higher rate of success. Mm. Kids that were brought up with intelligent praising, they tend to fail mm. easier because they will grow up with a sense that I don't need to put in hard work. And then when you go to reality in real life, real life is not like that, mm. right? Real life, most of the time, there's a lot behind the scenes hard work that people don't don't see. Because actually this ties into a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. Because Correct. when you praise somebody's uh, ability and uh, you praise somebody's effort, right? 
this person will feel that as long as I can put in more effort, it has a growth mindset, as long as I can contribute more and do something different, right? I will be probably getting that kind of results that I want. Yeah. But if you praise my intelligence, right? I would think that my intelligence is fixed. So when I fail, right? I would think that, oh, it's actually because I reach a stage that I'm not as clever as I thought I am. Correct. And so hence, it's like a fixed mindset and then that actually brings on to like the a lesser chance of success that you mentioned. Yeah. Mm. And uh, there was... So on top of this, there's also another very miraculous thing is about stress handling, mm. which relates to growth mindset. Mm. So they recently did a study. They played this video to like two, about two groups of people. And the other group is like, they never played this video. But this video is about telling you that actually uh, stress depends on your perspective. Stress can actually activate your growth mindset yep. rather than preventing it. So yeah, this is just something about that portion. Mm. Yeah, what do you think of this article? Inheritance. Uh, so, I, of course, <laughs> I, my clients also ask me on this portion. Did you read this? Uh, instead of reward for grades, give your children a modest allowance which will teach them. Which, I see which part you want me to... This Actually, this is an entire parenting article, right? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> okay. Like, I think like generally, that's why there are certain... Okay, structure-wise, the ultra high net worth, they have trust structures that are being set up such yeah. that, you know, like, uh, they decide how inheritance is going to be distributed. What are the certain milestones that mm. someone has to hit in order to withdraw that certain amount? Yep. And it's not, they don't receive it like one lump sum. Mm. Or sometimes, you know, like you can have a trust structure set up because maybe if I have, what's that called? Like, let's say I, I, I know that my kid probably because of medical conditions, he cannot take care of himself. I need to set a trust structure in order to have someone set up such that a caregiver can help to take care of his needs based on his interests. Mm. Mm. A lot of times, uh, parents or like you know like they, they tell me that oh I actually bought property A and property B and this property A is for my first my first child and this one is for my second child okay. I always ask them like that not fair one because uh, these two properties are of different value different bedroom type different location yeah. the only way you want to structure one property to give to one children it has to be exactly the same mm. meaning that you buy uh, same same floor level, same facing, same size. It can be mirror image. It cannot be different because from that angle, one of them will feel, eh, how come I receive something that is of a lesser value? Mm. The other way is that like, all your property inheritance, right? You just give it in equal percentage share. Yeah. They have to, of course, that depends on the relation of the siblings and they have to decide, you know, like when they will want to like let go yeah. of it. Yeah. I mean, I personally think this is a very sensitive issue. You have four kids, uh, you will understand this portion. <laughs> yeah. Fairness. Yeah. Actually, my, my intent, uh, I already told my wife that, yeah, yeah we'll- Nothing. Yeah, we'll- <laughs> Nothing, we'll, right? No, because I, I feel that if we leave like something for them, it's going to jeopardize, mm. uh, it's going to jeopardize their motivation in life. Mm. Yeah. And I always believe that uh, the Rex to riches kind of thing, in the sense that we should really fight and then we should really mm. like- strive la, to, to achieve mm. true hard work. But with that said, I think there's a very fine line where you don't want to uh, have it to the point that mm. like, you know, like ultimately you will have your own stay house, right? Okay, so I think I'll bless yeah. them with something. Correct. But probably it's, a, it's, a, it's an amount to like, as a blessing, but not yeah. to like jeopardize their motivation. Correct, correct. Yeah, so- Because there have been many situations that, you know, like, like wow, when pass away, hundred percent go towards the charity. Then really nothing. Then it starts to churn a very like you know why why he has to do this? Why they have to do this to me and all that kind of thing. So I think the conversation must yeah, start early. It, yeah. The conversation they must understand why uh, it's being done. That mm. kind of thing. Like like imagine if your children is really struggling uh, for something, and then in the end you you have like ten million and you give it to a charity after you pass. Uh, yeah. But if you understand, like maybe you can structure it in a way that it's like certain milestones he hit, mm. you know, that kind of thing. Read uh, are Peter Buffett's book. Yeah. book. Peter Buffett, uh, Warren Buffett's son, is a musician, and then he also wrote. He wrote. He wrote a book talking about this also. Yeah. About how much his dad gave him. It's yeah. like a fixed amount. Give him a head start for music, but that's all. After mm. that, yeah. Anything you want to top up? before we end for the next session while we prepare for the I debate. I you had a lot uh, to say about this article. No, I, I uh, keep it short and concise. We're going to talk to two guests soon. Mm. And then of course, we will meet back on the 15th. Hey, 15th September is a debate on NOTG it's a, it's a webinar. or it's a webinar. webinar. It's our webinar. Watch the webinar. It's uh, a live webinar. 15th September. At what time? Uh? 8 p.m. Uh? 
We're going to dip it until what, 11 p.m.? Start at 8 ah. <laughs> well, I just max, I, it's at one and a half hours lah. No lah, we just wait until 12 midnight ah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Your audience not going to- Got transport, <laughs> got supper, got <laughs> dinner included. Sure, no problem. I'll buy like 100 nuggets for you. Wow. Spicy nuggets? <laughs> okay. Thank we'll you very much. We'll see you in the next round. Bye. 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 Great. This is a social episode. Lah. Social. I, I feel so hurt. I feel Why? That Linden say, this is the only one of the rare <laughs> 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 <laughs>